squeezed in beside you. Chris Bryant. <laughs> um, really badly affected your part of the world. Uh, awful. Um, and what's really depressing, I mean, the Riola pub, which happens to be the pub I go to, but it's just down the hill and opposite my mother-in-law's house, and they virtually had a river running through the middle of it. They've been flooded before, so they keep on asking questions about why does this keep on happening, completely understandably, and it may be something complicated to do with the, uh, the railway bridge, which is over, goes over the river, and it's very... Sometimes it gets branches underneath it. And then there are lots of people in homes. I mean, one of the good pieces of news in Pentra, which was really badly hit in uh, Storm Dennis, is that, and that was because a culvert simply couldn't cope with the water that was coming down off the mountains. The council spent the best part of one and a half million pounds, if not more, on rebuilding a massive culvert there, and that held. So people in Lewis Street, who I visited yesterday morning, in Fountain Street, they, uh, Lewis Street rather, they hadn't been... Um, flooded, which is great, but obviously they were very nervous and they've got flood doors and all the rest of it. But the river, this time, was 52 centimetres, nearly half a metre higher than it was in Storm Dennis. So that just shows what a phenomenal, extraordinary moment this was. I feel for the people in Ponty. Um, and you know, Kay, I've said this to you before, because I remember talking to you um, when Storm Dennis happened. A lot of people, especially when finances are really, really tough, the last bill they pay is probably the insurance bill. So there are lots of people who will have lost everything. Now, I hope that the Welsh Government will be able to step in with some kind of financial support, as happened last time round. I've set up a GoFundMe page. If you want to find it online, I don't know where the camera is, um, that it's GoFund... If you just Google GoFundMe, Rhonda and Ogmore floods, um, we, if, if, we, if we were able to give £200, I need £20,000 just to be able to give £200 to each of the homes that have been flooded, let alone the, the businesses, as I say, like the Riola. And, and then up in Treherbert, we had flooding which we've never known before in a completely different way. And, and whether that's to do with the brash coming off the mountains, filling the culverts, I don't know. We'll have to do investigations. And we'll also have to investigate... Sorry, I'm going on a bit, Kay. Yeah. But um, the other thing I think we're going to have to investigate is... I think a lot of us, and certainly in the council, there was a view on on Saturday evening, that there should probably have been a, an emergency warning. Um, and I think NRW, Natural Resources Wales, decided that that wasn't necessary. Um, I don't know whether that's because the Met Office said that it wasn't or whatever it was. We were expecting the rain much later on Sunday, I, I, I guess. Um, but, of course, if people had had more warning, they would, might have been able to do more. And, and, sorry, there is one other thing, or two other things. Actually, one that I'm really worried about, the tips. You may recall in... Storm Dennis, there was that extraordinary sign of a landslide. 6,000 tonnes of the mountainside fell down into the river, which could have led to terrible flooding all the way down the Ronde Vach. Now, that cost the council £15 million to put right. That's just one tip. Obviously, we've got a lot in South Wales. I'm really These glad... These are coal tips. These are all former coal tips, yeah. yes, exactly, yeah, not rubbish tips. Mm. Um, and um, we do monitor them all the time. They're part of our industrial heritage, as it were. But, you know, £15 million is a very large chunk out of a council's budget. Um, and it doesn't deliver anything new, as it were. You don't get a new school out of it or anything. Um, I'm really glad that the, the Westminster government, as part of the budget, gave £25 million to the Welsh government specifically for tips. But, obviously, we've got to monitor all of them, because when this very heavy um, rainfall comes, sometimes it's a few days later that you see the, the real troubles. We've seen the tragedy that that... Oh, sorry, and sorry, OK, there is one other thing. I said there were two, and I was right. There were, there were two. The other is... Um, in the top half of the Ronda of Bower, so um, Treherbert, Triorki, um, down to Tonopandi, we've also got a, a problem with the water. So Welsh Water have issued a boil water alert, so everybody's meant to boil their water before drinking it. And I know that provides complications for families with young kids because of whether or not um, to go and get um, bottled water, which isn't very good for young kids, as I understand it. Um, but these are all the problems that are facing a community which is, which is you know which struggles financially at the best of times. Sure. Rachel and I were talking, actually, before you came on the set, about the warnings that were issued. And some warnings were issued, weren't they? But it was about whether or not it was too late. Yeah, absolutely. And I think there were concerns both around... The, the, some people have raised issues around whether or not it should have been upgraded as a weather warning in and of itself. So that's starting from the Met yeah. Office, so that's about what the council and the local authorities get. But then it's also about the schemes that then are in place to text residents or to email them or to go into local communities and say you need to be careful. And there's real concerns about that this morning, isn't there? Yes. Uh, well, and especially we, we rely on digital services. And I'm the telecoms minister, and I know that digital services aren't necessarily available to everybody. And if you're not wealthy, 
um, you might not be able, able to afford the kind of phone that would get that information to you. But yes, uh, um, the, the leader of the council, Andrew Morgan, said yesterday um, that he was concerned about whether the, the right amount of information had been given out in insufficient time. Though, you know, as I say, the, you know, when you see the hor horrific scenes in, in Pontypridd, which in many ways has had it wor the worst of the lot, because all the water comes down from the Ronda straight into Tonto and, and from other valleys as well. Mountain ash also terribly affected, straight down into Ponte. Um, it does, you know, all the money that we do spend, and these are local authorities who've been really cash strapped for the last 14 years, really struggled even to pay, but provide basic services financially. Um, you know, we sort this bit out and then the water comes through here. Uh, there's one bit in Britannia where, where I was out with people yesterday and where the um, fire brigade had to um, evacuate quite a lot of people. And there was one po old, poor old lady who hasn't got anywhere else to go. So she was just being moved upstairs. And thanks to the emergency service, they've, they've done an amazing job and the council services over the weekend. Um, but, you know, the council had actually increased the size of the wall by the river, but that wasn't enough because it came through another corner where there's a fence, and which previously hasn't been the problem. Um, and then you've got the questions about whether the pump was working, whether it was switched on on time. Um, is the worst over for now? It feels as if the worst is over now. And, and to, I mean, I had to get back to London, so uh, because I've got a whole series of meetings today in the department. But um, as I was leaving yesterday, and of course all the trains are a complete mess. I, 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 there's a WhatsApp group for MPs trying to get to Parliament today for important votes. And uh, I mean, that's the least of it, to be honest. But. There'll be lots of people in the Ronda worrying how they're going to get into work today at all. And, of course, people still messing up. So we say the worst is over, but for many families, they'll be going, right, we, we're taking the sofa off to the tip, but I have no idea how we're going to be able to afford a new sofa. And a few weeks ahead of Christmas as well, and the long-term impact for these families and mental health and everything else in these communities must be dire. All of that. Years later. And thank God that Rondo is a very supportive community. I mean, there were, lo were Labour councillors out yesterday carrying sandbags from the, from the depot because some of the, de the, the council's um, lorries and vans were flooded as well and, and couldn't work. So they were, they were taking sandbags to families who really needed them. Um, I remember last time people made uh, their own sandbags with, um, with uh, pillow cushions. Uh, with Pillow, pillowcases. Pillowcases, that's the word, thank you. Um, and the problem there was that sometimes those burst and then a week later you had the drain full of sand um, yeah. and then you had a further round of flooding. So I, I really don't want to say that the worst is over. I know that we're going to have to try and raise as much money as we possibly can for individual families who are really, really going to be struggling in my patch. So um, if anybody has a spare thousand pounds, <laughs> if anybody has a spare thousand pounds, um, you just have to go go fund me, Rhonda and Ogmore floods. I'd be really grateful if we could get to twenty thousand pounds. We'd be able to give to two hundred pounds to everybody who I think has Make been sure affected. We put it on the Twitter feed when as and when we clip this up. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.